saw the Bob Fosse segment, I said, there's no way that Bob Fosse didn't choreograph that because that's oh, wait, Bob, Bob Fosse's Fosse the guy from, uh, then, uh, 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 what's that story, right? No. It's not? That's Russ Tamlin. So what, who's Bob Fosse? I'm sorry, continue. I'm sorry. Bob Fosse is one of the greatest, was one of the greatest choreographers of all time. Sweet Charity, um, uh, uh, what did Liza win the Academy Award for? Phil Com and the venue welcome. Oh, come on, man. The fuck? 1973? That, 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 my Lieber hair, it was a fine affair, but now it's over. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sounds pretty depressing, but now it's over. Yeah, it's a great, um, all that, no, he did all that jazz, Sweet Charity, uh, Lenny, but he's most famous for. For. She won the fucking Academy Award for it. Liza, Joel Gray. I know Earl Gray. Oh, That's shit. some great tea. Yeah, it's his, his, his brother. <laughs> Joe, Earl uh, Gray's brother. Joe Gray. <laughs> Joe Gray. Yo, the Gray brothers. You know those guys. After Sweet Charity, before Lemmy, won the Academy Award based on Christopher Isherwood's I Am a Camera. Oh, for fuck's sake. I Am a sake. Camera. That's the name of it? I Am a Camera? Well, that's... No, that was the, the novel that was based on Christ, Christopher Isherwood. I Am a Camera. I'm a Camera. I am a camera recording imagery. It's a famous noirist classic from. Um, <laughs> well, you know, it's Christopher was uh, this gay uh, British dude in Weimar, Germany. You know what? If I had to pick well, anywhere to be gay back well, in the day, it'd probably been Germany. It's like there's a little more open and uh, accepting. Well, you know, not not during Hitler's journey. This oh, is just before you know, Weimar. Um, Joel. Gray and Liza Cabaret. Oh, Cabaret! I've heard of that. I've Cabaret. Of that. Yeah, great movie. Come to the Cabaret, bon chum. Life is a cabaret. I used to share a. Oh, by the way, we're live right now. We've been live oh, for the last three minutes. Are you? Are you I fucking with not. me? Hey, everybody! We live. I'm here with my guy, Uncle Stash. Uh, Apologize for the yeah talking about the the lack of um videos right now. Uh, I'm gonna blame it on COVID. What you gonna blame it on? My life. <laughs> well, the fact that you went fucking live, and I'm talking about Bob Fosse and jazz hands, and you didn't even let me no, know. No, it was actually Jesus interesting conversation. Christ. Jazz hands, man. I never knew like where jazz hands came from. Jazz hands. Yeah, it's Bob Fosse. So, so kiss me, Kate. Was was ostensibly choreographed by Herbert Pan, you know, um, Fred Astaire's famous partner, and uh, not partner in the gay sense, but they were choreography partners. And when I saw it again, and I saw the Bob Fosse segment, then I realized no, these are classic Fosse moves. He must have he must have choreographed that. And sure enough, and, and when I when I looked it up, Herbert Pan left led uh, Bob Fosse choreograph his own moves in that particular scene. So Bob Fosse was a very team? stylistic dancer. Well, he was a dancer. He was a dancer, a choreographer. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can respect that. Yeah. Cabaret, that was 73. It won, was it Best Picture? I mean, uh, Liza Minnelli won Best Actress. Great, great performance. And what's his name? Um, Jesus Christ. He played the the kind of gay love interest uh, Brit. He was the Christopher Isherwood surrogate. I am a camera. What's his, what was his goddamn name? Jesus. Anyway, whatever I got. Why here? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Cabaret, gonna look it up. Life is a cabaret, old chum. Joel Gray. Cabaret. Oh well. Michael York. Is that the guy who uh, invented the York peppermint patties? Sounds like it. That's him. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. York. Same family. Yeah. Michael Lecar. 
It'd be yeah, awesome Michael York. Was, though. I was just he, his second cousin twice removed Ernie York. <laughs> Ernie York. Uh, Ernie York. Yeah. Ernie York, inventor of the York peppermint yep. patty. Michael York, the famous actor. Are you, yeah, that'd be awesome. If that really was the case, though. Like the York peppermint patties, brothers. No, I'm fucking. That'd be you. awesome, though. Like, yeah, I, I I've never liked really? peppermint. You're not a peppermint patty guy. Nah. Uh, okay. What? Maybe. What? Oh. What? Maybe, maybe in a park on a rainy afternoon when I was dead. What's like the old um, candy that's not around anymore that you used to like? Ah, okay. It's just, there used to be a candy bar in Canada called a snack bar. Snack and, bar. Uh, it wasn't good it, for naming stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, snack yeah. bar. What is it? It's a snack bar. Yeah. Called a snack bar. Anyway, they got rid of that in the uh, late 80s, 90s. It turns out, and I, I actually spent like a couple hundred bucks to import a case from Australia. It's there under another name. And because I had too much money and I'm an idiot. So, about a year and a half ago, I brought in uh, a case. I can't remember what it was called, but it's this, it, it was the same snack bar under a different name. And God, it was good to eat. Yeah. I've got some chocolate, imported chocolate over there. I was just in Sheba at the import store. What, the uh, Caldi's? Yeah. I'm on a diet. No, no. I was at, uh, I don't know, some place at Sheba Station. I got the, the the bubbly arrow shit and uh, bubbly arrows. Cadbury caramel and yeah, the, I don't know, man. I got some. I got I, a bit of this, a bit of that. You know, some steam buns, cheese steam buns. Did you get bun. some vegetables, though, man? Oh yeah. No, seriously, yeah, did you get some vegetables? I got some. I did. Yes, I got some rhubarb cake. That's not vegetables, bro. Come on, man. Like yo, rhubarb is a vegetable. The cake is not a vegetable, bro. That's like saying. Yeah, but the no, rhubarb man. is. Come on, dude, stop that. Like, when are you going to see buying some vegetables, man? Like, seriously. Dead ass. Buy some vegetables. Tomorrow. Hey, how's that 15 pounds of pork working out for you there? Uh, hey, man, hey, <laughs> hey, you're trying to change the subject, but yeah, it's working out pretty good, actually. Yeah, he calls He calls me this morning and says, yo, I just got 15 pounds of pork. I thought it was like a metaphor for something like really dirty and sexual. No, he got 15 pounds of pork. So it was like, okay, dude, you got your 15 pounds of pork. What are you going to do with it? I just see that being something sexual. <laughs> he just screwed up the cooking. Got 15 pounds yeah. of pork. Yeah. Hey, lady, I got 15 pounds yeah, of pork. Definitely your Me Too moment. Oh, I'm going to stop. It's like, it really is, man. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm calling. I got to report somebody on this one. Yeah, yeah. I've got to I gotta go to the house. Of course, I just got back into the house. I was in Chiba, so, you know. Yeah, how was, how was Chiba? The great uh, city of Chiba. I don't know. I was there like for 10 minutes. I took the train in, went to the, some shopping at Chiba Station, and then took the express train back to Tokyo Station. Well, on your record... You, you know, every every Sunday, right? You know you know what happens, right? Because I'm my mate. I got to screw up for two and a half hours. A little humble flex real quick. I got a mate. Really? Go throw that in there. No, you... you, you no, you told me what I do. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, I admit, said, my mate. Yeah, no. I, my mate's I, coming over. Ooh. Well, that's what I do every Sunday. I got to... Oh, never mind. No, I just, I go off to think. That's it. Nah, you're such think. a wasp. Go on live it up to it, man. It's like, yeah, I have a maid come by every Sunday to watch my draws. <laughs> watch my draws, oh boy. Tell me. Oh. Okay, so I do. Sue you me. Her, name, her name's it's Lynn. A good flex, bro. Like I'm saying, it's a, actually a, a, a nice flex to say, hey, I got a, I got a maid. I don't. <laughs> yeah, but you got rhythm. You got my love. Who could ask for anything more? Me, money. Yeah, oh, for you guys who don't know, I'm actually just talking to Uncle Stash while I work on this uh, beat he suggested from Inagata de Vida. Uh, it's a yeah. riff he sent me. Like the day before, so, the day before yesterday. When, when was this the, the bloody thing? Like two, yeah, three actually, ago? let me let you guys hear the uh, the original riff so you know what I'm doing while I'm over here doing it. Okay. Uh, here we go. Hit me. Hit me, baby. Oh, I should probably turn it up, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Probably, yeah. yeah. You want me to contextualize it first? I want y'all hear that. I hear it. Love it, baby. Doggy go. Yeah. 
favorite guitar lick. Maybe, maybe Air Frog. Yeah, that's what I'm working on, guys. And well, like, so Eric, the, the late Eric Braun, 17 years old, 1967, eight, when he recorded that lick on the, you know, the 17 minute, five second version of. He said, I got it 17 in years old. So what I did was, like any true hip hop guy, I fucked up your childhood. Uh, <laughs> slowed yes. it, slowed it much. down. It came with this. <laughs> this just in: Discord in the Middle East. Pick up the phone. Give us a call. One eight hundred. Five six five three three four four. Lines open now. The deal is happening. This Soon. could be a good porno, uh, porno soundtrack background music. Hey man, I got the porno broad back there. We're all set to go porno. Work it right? out, man. This be out. Dealer, give me five minutes, baby. <laughs> You're wrong. But... Sheila actually uh, won one of the porno awards for what was that? What? Sheila, what was the name of the movie? Nuns, Lesbian, Anal Adventures, Volume Two. Okay, well, that's the demonetization of this video. Thank you. She, she was, she was, yeah, she, it's already got. She, she was a genius in that. Oh yeah. So this is what I'm working on right now. I'm trying to, uh, I got the beat sound like I want to. Now I gotta add. Yep. Some elements to it. I got sound the way I really want to sound it, man. I think it came out pretty nice. I like the hey, 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 hey. The uh the ambiotic haze in the back. Yeah. It does like That's actually Bruno Mars. A lot of people don't know that. Lord Spade tied him in a room and threatened him with a gun. Mofo, you go hey, 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 or I go bang, bang, bang. <laughs> yeah. Fact. <laughs> if I thought I could get away with it, I would. You know, Bruno Mars came to Japan yeah. like two years ago, and I went on Twitter and asked him to come to my after party. I'm like, come to my party, you're in Japan. He did not show up. Yeah, I know, what a right? Shame, I was shocked too. Like, wow. Like, yeah. I'm, what? What? I'm a, a nice trick. guy. <laughs> I am a nice guy, Bruno. Like, why? Why not show up to my party? He did yeah, not do it. Okay. Though. Did not. What a prick. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add vocals. Whoa. Who's the rapper? Who, who's the rapper? And I say what I want. I walk with a limp and I smoke a lot of skunk. My music got soul and funk and it's banging in my trunk. Cool. All right. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to start mixing this while I talk to you, man. Keep on talking, man. I'm just going to do some mixing. Go ahead. I got nothing, man. If there's one thing I'm not very good at, it's talking extemporaneously, except, of course, when I am. And you try doing shopping channel TV for three and four hours at a time selling shit to shit to shit. You get to be a genius at that ever shit. believe Cubic Zirconia? Anything you sold? Not a the thing, season? no. Oh, no, some of them, sure, yeah. I mean, it depended, man. You know, some of the some of it was good. Some of it I bought. Really? But, I mean, you did you get a honest, discount? The Cubic Zirconia, yeah, sure I did. Uh, actually. That'd be cool you got a discount on product. Like, yeah. <laughs> there was a, a time when they didn't understand the price of gold had gone way up. And they had a whole bunch of surplus chains that were, they were selling below cost. And I got an extra, you know, nugget on top of that. So I bought a fuckload of gold chains and I got them way below the retail price of gold. And I took them down to um, my young and Dundas there, the old jewelry boat, uh, building. And I sold them and I made a, I made a bank of cash. Really? How much you make? Yeah. A couple of grand. The, the best, we had this spiff on this thing called the Merlin. Was it Merlin? I think Merkin? it was Merlin. Like the, it was the, this the, carpet the, cleaning. 
Merc, I, I can't remember exactly, but it was this little stain cleaner thing. And I think we were getting a fin or seven bucks a unit, right? So, and that was cash, man. In addition to your salary, everything else, this is just cash in your pocket from the manufacturer. So I can remember on a Saturday afternoon, literally selling thousands of them. The bargain bill was there. We're all like rating each other, you know, rating each other to get the product into our show because there was so much cash in it. And it wasn't actually a bad little machine. It worked. It even worked. And I remember we sold a couple of, a couple of thousand of them and I was getting like five bucks a machine. So you, you, you sell 2000 of those in addition to your salary and your commission, you got 10,000 in, in folding money, you know, walking out the door with, yeah, it was a lucrative, it was a lucrative yeah, day. Yeah, damn good lucrative day. What are you talking about? Like, yeah. <laughs> in retrospect, I should have told my wife about the money I Wait, had. Why not? Well, why did you, why, 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 what made you keep it from her? My mind worked different because I was a prick. You know, at least you admit it. I smoke a lot of skunk. My music got sold and fun. I am divorced long ago. Yeah, cruising down the block, people looking at my stunt. I'm everything you're not. Hot and cold in the same pot of scoop of vanilla top with some. You guys can't tell the plug in I'm using right now, but I'm actually using uh, uh, Neutron from Isotope. It's a good plug in. Actually, Rick Beato likes this plug in, so we got something in common. Oh. I, th I thought you, you never used Rick Beato stuff. I love Rick. How you doing, no, buddy? I, no, love no, you. This is just a happy coincidence, man. Like, um, mm. Rick is just happy. You know, a, block, a broke clock is right twice a day. Uh, but no, isotope plugins are really great when it comes to mixing. So I'm using that to uh, mix the vocals. Okay. Who's the vocalist? Oh, this is James Payne from Memphis, Tennessee. He's, I knew that. rapping about um, Tokyo Stash is paid. My mind work different and I say what I want. I walk with a limp and I smoke a lot of skunk. My music got sold and fuck and it's banging in my trunk. Cruising down the block, people looking at my stunt. Right now I'm just looking for, for uh, hot and cold in the same cut out. Pot of scoop of vanilla I uh, with mix my subtraction first. We can get it I don't red add and a subtract with sounds. the topics. Challenge misconception. More, I, I'm more of an addition mixer and, and, and mixer than I do a little bit of multiplication. And then I, you know, I do the dosi -si do. I turn it all around because that's See, I know what it's you're trying all to be about. an ass, but you're actually like hitting on something, right? Because like most <laughs> I, people I do know. mix by addition, and what that means is they'll like start turning knobs up and adding frequencies on different sides, and you're like, "Yo, dude, 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 you're doing too much. Take some stuff away." Like, yeah, you're actually hitting on something that's like. A problem with a lot of people mixing. My mind work different, and I say what I want. I walk with a limp, and I smoke a lot of skunk. My music got soul and funk, and it's banging in my trunk. Cruising down the block. You know what? I would like to talk to Rick Beato about I'm something every... though, about mixing, like dead ass. I would like to see. Okay. Uh, didn't. Let, let me just get my my K tie. I'll give him a call. Rick Beato used to have a um, a record label, I think. Yeah, he went broke. He's got a video about how it went yeah, under. So I wonder was he doing the mixing himself, or was he like hiring people to do it? Don't know, but he did. He just had uh, had dinner with Joni Mitchell. Who's that? Joni yeah, who's Mitchell. That? Like, yo, you gonna you gonna tell me, or you gonna judge me for not knowing? <laughs> what well, I'm gonna judge you for not knowing. One of the greatest songwriters of the 20th century, singer, songwriter, folk, blue, whatever great albums. Oh, no, I remember blue. Mind. Yeah, Joni Mitchell. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's Jody Mitchell. Yeah. A Canadian, no less, from so, Alberta. Why do you have lunch with her? Because he said that one of her songs was tremendous, and the I think it was either Warner or Universal Music Group took it down after a year. He freaked out on, he did a rant, and evidently Joni Mitchell's assistant heard it, who took it to Joni Mitchell, who called the record company and said, I want this fucking video back up. Now, let me ask you something, right? And she, this guy made a well, rant yeah. on YouTube about something the yeah. record company did. Do you think that's a G yeah. move, a boss move, or was this kind of a snowflakey move? What do you think? Oh, it's a ballsy move. Different than I say no, he I said, no, absolutely. So you don't think that was kind yeah. of snowflakey? Okay. No, no. He, he, he said, what is your business model, mm -hmm. idiots? This is a song recorded 50 years ago. Where, where, how are you, I'm trying to expose this 600,000 view video to people for the most part who were born after the song was released. Where is your business model making money, fools? Mm -hmm. And he had heard earlier on from Joni Mitchell's assistant that Joni loved his, you know, why is this song so great video gets taken down and then Joni gets involved Boom, it's back up. He's in Los Angeles. 
And they I agree. It's a G move. I just wish people would uh, apply that same standard to everything else when people complain. Because basically, it's just a dude complaining. Sure. Dude complaining and end up getting what yeah, he wants. But, he, but, but like, yeah, but the, the call to action was if you know anyone at, at so and so music group, if you know someone, call them right mm-hmm. now. Send them an email. Call your congressman. Don't let this bullshit mm-hmm. happen. I'm just saying, man. Like, the complaining. I'm just saying, I've seen the same thing position in other things. Like, oh, look at these people complaining. Oh, you just don't want the rules to apply to you. I'm just being an asshole because I don't like Rick Beato. Why don't you, you like You know what? Rick let me put out why I don't like Rick Beato, man. Like, seriously, let me take a break from... Hold on, let me, let, let me give you that. And now, DJ L. Spade, why he doesn't like And let me, let me tell you why I don't like Rick Beato, right. dude. Like, Rick Beato is that old man pumping his fist telling kids to get off his yard. And that's what I don't like, like about it. Like, and me too, as I get older, I see changes in music, even changes in rap music. But like, Rick is so goddamn pretentious with it, dude. Like, he'll listen to Spotify Top 10 and be like, I don't like the hi-hats in this because the hi-hats are tick, 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 tick it away. It's like, yo, maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's not for you. You're saying. Yeah, I completely disagree with you. I'm just saying, you can, man. Look, all right. I think when you start getting to like trying to say label a art form less than or better than based on your old contrived standards, you, you're going into muddy water, I think, because you got to give the medium time to breathe. Maybe you don't understand it, but don't like disparage it and be like, well, this is not real music because the high hats don't really see real high hats go like this. Why are you always using the same generic Because people know what I'm doing. Like, just like man. when white folks be like, hey, man, man, brother, man. When I go, hey, how you doing? Like, people know. Like, yeah. <laughs> when do you I know, ever do you know, hey, my you know, man, you brother, do the, man? The, the hand sig- his signals. Yeah, exactly. So it's the same thing. But no, Rick Beato is a very knowledgeable, very charismatic, and you know what? He has a lot of knowledge. I, I would never take that away from him. I just I don't like his, his points of view on, on stuff. I'm just like, yo, bruh, you are the disgruntled old dude talking about, hey, back in my day, all the music was great. Yeah. One, one sec. Rick, are you watching? Uh, promoting our channel would be really cool. Forget this dude. It's Tokyo Stash and Spade. Like, Thank you. Rick okay, Beato, right. though, is that guy, though, that... that Honestly, I could see myself being friends with, but he'd be the friend I argue with all the damn time. That's cool. <laughs> he'd be Uncle Stash too. <laughs> Stash, yeah, that's right. Oh, pick up the phone. Oh, the white men love me. <laughs> yeah, they have they, they have a line outside his apartment of older white men ready, ready? to love. Oh my god, that sounds so nasty. Time. Hey, so it's my turn. I'm ready to love him, Spade. Name on in. I'm gonna love you good time, not long time, mofo. You know, I don't think my, uh, my music gas the, uh, only. I would go for that much. Twenty? Uh, I don't know. You know, what would be, what would be your rate? Ah, uh, for like an older white man to have his way with me. <laughs> yeah. For an hour. Twenty twenty thousand yen. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you know, people, okay, this is the, th- the part where people start saying those ridiculous ass prices like, oh, a million dollars. Yeah. No, 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 no. My my, my 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 butt is not worth two thousand. I mean, $2 million. So, like, realistically, looking at the value of me, I work out. I have a good diet. So, yeah. it's pretty clean yeah. back there. Uh, also, uh, it hasn't been used. So, I'm, I'm assuming it's pretty tight. It's premium, premium booty. I think for me, Around one thousand dollars a session would be right on, right on, on point. So that's you know, but a hundred thousand yen. Okay, fair enough. Why don't you advertise on Craigslist? <laughs> you know, s- sexy black American will let you bum him for a hundred. You know why I don't yen. do it? Because I think somebody would take me up on it. Why? That's why I don't do it. Exactly. Yeah, that's my that's point. My point. What's the point? Like I don't want, I don't want to go through with it. But I'm, I'm saying, man, like realistically, I think a thousand dollars. For my uh nice supple black booty, with is right on point. How about you? How much? How much you go for? Let me. Nah, I got. I I don't want to have my. I'm saying, but I'm just yeah, saying. No. In this hypothetical, how much would it go for? It'd be a lot more than a grand, buddy. Do you think it's worth the grand? I I, 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 I I don't give it. I don't give a shit what it's worth. I have to. I have to put in my own trauma. No. And my own. Uh, now, if you ask me what I think I'm worth, I would definitely say a million dollars, like a million dollars a session. If I'm just talking about realistically marketplace value, I'd probably like get a thousand. If we was doing like a, 
a, a true assessment putting me out there <laughs> on the digital whole track, I believe do, do, a do, thousand. Do you remember the last do you remember the last video we did, how we ended it? Jesus splooging mm -hmm. on our face. Yeah, remember that? We're back at the splooging on our face a, foot. That's a, how, a real conversation. How, how can we ever do a video where we don't hey, have I'm Jesus splooging on our face question, or, or bum sex? Question. How much do you think you get on the market? 100K. 100K US dollars. Oh, could I get? Oh, I can fuck all. I'm a fat old white dude. But how much would I go for? Okay, That's okay. different. All right, all right. You know what? All right. I put the cat. I would go for 100K myself. However, I think I would get 2,000 mm. on the market. And you think you go for 100K too, but you don't know what you'll get on the market. All right, gotcha. Cool. I get fuck all, all right, the market. Cool, yeah. Cool, cool, okay. Cool. Now, can we get can we get off the Jesus splooge oh, me onto something a little bit more G-rated? Go for it, man. I don't know what to say, man. Now I'm telling you this, man. All right. So <laughs> I was actually reading that BBC article you sent me, man. And mm. let me tell you. By the way, you know the BBC. That's a real nice segue know, from the, Jesus Splooge to me. Big yeah. communications. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just sent about an article about BBC. Yeah, the B you know what? I'm not gonna lie, man. That was so funny because I actually sent that to a, a Japanese girl one time. I like. She's like, "What you doing?" I was like, "Oh, uh, looking at the BBC." She's like, "You're into gay porn?" I was like, "Come on, dog. Like, what are we doing?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna need you to get more informed, lady." That relationship didn't last long. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I was w yeah. looking at the BBC article you sent me about the IOC and why Japan didn't um, cancel the Olympics. Mm. And let me say, man, I owe Japan an apology. Yeah. Like the government. I do, because mm. I, on my podcast, I was talking about, like, man, the whole Japanese government is stupid for doing this, and I don't see why they're doing it. The people don't want it. But after you point me to that article, I got it. I got it. Mm. It's just sad. Shame. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. Because there's no way it's going to happen. At some point, they have to bite the bullet. I mean, let's be honest. It ain't going to happen. Who's coming? Nobody's Who? coming, dude. Nobody. Legit, nobody, nobody is coming. coming to the Olympics. I mean, it's, dude, it, it's May. It's the middle of May. It's supposed to happen in the middle of July. It's two months. Who's coming? I mean, I don't know why anybody will actually want to come, to be honest with you. That's that's like my thing. Like, why would you want to come? Yeah. What, what's the purpose of coming? They're, they're, yeah, well, or breathing hard. They're, they're talking about rescheduling it until uh, next year again. So it's going to be the So you're going to have the summer and the winter Olympics, Olympics right next to each other? I don't know, dude. Used to be like that. You used to have summer and winter. But, uh, I mean, that'd be dope. I'm actually, I'm actually all for that. Yeah. I'm actually all for like having the summer Olympics right next to the winter Olympics. That'd be dope as hell, I think. They they used to do that. Why did they stop? This alternate... I, I don't know. Uh, who knows? Huh. Yeah. That is some, you know. Let me let me let me pull this up for a second, because um, you actually had me thinking about this. Um, BBC. <laughs> yes, that's what you had me thinking of, man. Good old BBC. You know me so well. Yeah, I do. Uh, let me see. Can I stop sharing this? Uh, I maybe just messed up this whole thing. Hope not, because I want to hear that damn thing all mixed together. That's the whole point of today's show. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually working on it, but the the BBC um, article goes to say, and I just think this is good to point out because that if Japan basically cancels the what well, Japan cannot cancel the Olympics, only the IOC can cancel the Olympics. And it can only be right. a joint venue. And if they don't cancel the Olympics together, then Japan has to foot the whole bill for everything. Which I say, looks like Japan going to be footing the whole bill for everything. Because this Olympics ain't going to happen. <laughs> mm. Nah. It, it ain't no going to happen. No way. At all. No. Not unless they reschedule no, next year. Not. No, no. All right. Back to the music, man. Because I don't want to get into that. Um, like. Meanwhile, back of the music. What are you? Why do you like Inagata Vida? Inagata Navida? And what made you send me this riff? Oh, I mean, well, okay. The, the, the song itself, you and I did that 30 minute video on. And I mean, I, yeah, I just, it's got memories and I like it. It's, it's, you and I both agree it's too long. Way the too drum, long. The, the, the drumming isn't, isn't particularly mm -hmm. sophisticated, but it's got some nostalgia. But that one segment, you know, two thirds in where Braun comes in on guitar, I just love that lick. 
I love that that uh, that that shred the way he just lays it down. I actually it's think amazing. it's pretty basic. So, yeah, that, that's why shred. it's it's unique because the sound it's coming out sounds like a yeah, scream. The, but yeah. it's basic. right. That's my point. I mean, I would agree with you, and yeah, I would agree with you at that point. But it is a very unique sound. It's always unique as hell. It's definitely unique. It's like me trying to explain to my dad why Skrillex was like innovative when he heard all the dubstep. He was like, I, I don't get it. It just sounds like feedback. I'm like, but you don't get it. It's how he's using the feedback. <laughs> so yeah, I can see that, man. How, how is your dad? You, you know what? I talked to the old man day before yesterday. He's doing okay. Um, he's taking a break. He's taking a vacation. My father's a truck driver. So yeah, he's taking a vacation, uh, you know, laying off his prostate. By the way, does your dad like six days on the road and I'm going to make it home tonight? That song? 70s? Or like Convoy? Does he actually listen Probably. to that shit? Like my dad is an eclectic right. man. He doesn't look like it, but he's super eclectic. No, but those are famous 70s truck really? driver songs. Yeah. Six days on the road and I'm going to make it. And, you know, the CB songs oh, and no, shit. Oh, he probably doesn't listen to that. Convoy. <laughs> no, not now. This is, this is stuff from the Who 70s. Who was a truck driver in the 70s? Okay. Neither was I. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, this song is going out pretty good. He just he he he's more of a Boston. More than a feel. No, he loves, he loves Boston. He loves Boston, yeah. Chicago. Yeah, Boston Auto, if it, if his name from a city, he loves it. Kansas, Boston, Chicago. Mm. Is there any more bands named after cities? Toronto. There's a band named Toronto. Yeah, it, it's ironic. The lead singer, Holly Woods, was actually from Cincinnati. <laughs> she moved to Toronto. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So it's a band named Tarana. And uh, what was their hit? They had one hit. Oh, God. I can't remember. Anyway, they had one hit, and then they disbanded, and Holly fucked off back to Cincinnati. Really? Yeah. Hold on, let me look it up. Toronto band. What was their hit? Toronto, we love you. Yeah, your daddy don't your know. Daddy don't. Your daddy don't know what your mama's gonna do tonight. That's it. Yeah. Shake it up. It's not a bad song. Shake it up. Yeah. Sounds like a song about cheating. <laughs> yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Annie Holly Woods. Where is she from again? One sec. Annie Holly Woods. I think it was Cincinnati. One second. Come on, yeah. Rally Durham? Durham? North Carolina? Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, D North Carolina. She moved from San Francisco to Toronto in the oh. mid-70s. Okay. okay, and Looking for Trouble, 80, Head On, 81, Get It On Credit, 82, Girls Night Out, 83. Okay, the, the hit was 83. Yeah, that's it. March 83. Oh, nice. Your daddy don't, yeah. That's it. That's an interesting yeah. thing. All right. Uh -huh. All right. There you go. So, well, guys, and Chilliwack. There's a there's there's another Canadian band named Bedford City, Chilliwack. Mm -hmm. Chilliwack, British Columbia, Chilliwack. Jules loves one of their songs. What's it called? Uh, Chilliwack. Four men in a rock and roll. Chilliwack. Four men in a rock and roll band. Da -da 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 -da. Oh God, how's it going? Across the universe, fade away. Mm, we got a big hold on chilliwack song one sec chilliwack oh it's an indian name man come on oh, it's not even indian it's called uh indigenous people ha huh? whatever <laughs> whatever buddy. whatever you know <laughs> whatever i was having an argument with alex <laughs> he was like i don't like that people can't say indian anymore i was like I'm just going to be honest. Nobody okay. asked them for what they want to be called. Fly at night. Fly at night. Yeah, it's fly called Fly at, at night. night. Yeah. Fly at night. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a terrible song. It's a great song. Actually, Jules loves it. I like it. Big hit in Canada. Fly at night. Fly at night. Yeah. No. That's how it goes. Sounds sound like this how it no. goes. Fly at night. I love you. Yeah, not even close. No. Not, not, it's more of a meditative, melancholic piece with a, you know, six string strumming. But that's yeah. how Rick Beato sings. You've completely messed it up. Sings like that. Hey, I'm Rick Beato. 
<laughs> Let's stop in the name of love and get back to Itagata de Vida. How oh, goes yeah, the track? Pretty good. I was just trying to wrap it up and say, man, well, right now the mix will be on the vocals. They've heard like the finished beat. So I will mix the vocals and that will be it. And then I can let everybody hear the last thing. I wanted to come here and do a premiere. So this is basically a, a advertisement for the next time we go live. We have the whole thing finished. So you guys can go back and listen to the right, riff. So, so go back to the uh, live I did before when I first did it. You can see the progression. So now I'm adding vocals to it. The next time me and my Uncle Stas go live, bam, it'll be finished. What's the time frame? Man, I will have this done by next week. Right. Putting me on timers. I like it. I'm a deadline driven person though. So you didn't know that. Like that that, that makes that. my little wee wee hard when you put me on deadlines. I love that. You didn't know that, see? You... Well, I'm very I'm very happy that I made your yes. wee wee heart. Better than Viagra. That deadlines. I'm like, mm -hmm. I feel it. Jesus, this is what my life is down to. Now. All right, are we out? Are we out? out to my friend. Oh, tell people about your no. Before, before we go, before we go, before we go, tell people about your side hustle and what you're doing. Come on, man! Your creative outlet that you're doing on a new venture. Oh, that not yet. No, when, when it's done. Really? Okay, when Aww. it's done. Right now, right now it's All just right. this. Well, not well, now. We keep it a secret from you guys. Y'all right. guys, be safe. Yeah, yeah. Big, Hit big him secret, with it, Uncle Stan.